Hi, Caleb with Brown Eyes here. And in today's tech tip, we're gonna be going through the differences between the BRN180 Gen 3 and other generations, but specifically the Gen 2, all right? So both of these are 13.9 inch variants. Uh, the only like real difference in the, the variants themselves is that we have different muzzle device, or this one doesn't have a muzzle device and this one's pin and welded. So just disregard the muzzle devices. They're both half 28 threads because these are both 5.56s, right? All right, so let's just uh, jump right into it. And if you're not familiar with the BRN180 Gen 3, check out the product spotlight video we did on it. And also check out the maintenance video we did. That's a, that's a good one as well. All right, so the biggest thing you're gonna notice whenever you first look at it at a glance is going to be charging handles. This is the Gen 2, charging handles on the right hand side, and it is reciprocating, which means every time you pull the trigger and you fire around, the charging handle moves with the bolt, okay? Now on the Gen 3, the charging handle is on the left hand side, and it is non-reciprocating. So it's still a, technically a right hand bolt setup because it's ejecting from the right hand side. But every time you pull the trigger, that charging handle is not moving. It only moves whenever you reach up and manually charge it. So when you're shooting, bang, 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 it stays in the forward position, doesn't move. All right. So with that being said, obviously the ejection port is still in the same places. On the Gen 2, you have a dust cover that opens up manually, like it, or opens up automatically when you shoot, like it does on a standard AR-15. You can close it manually. On the Gen 3, you have a dust cover that slides with the bolt. So this isn't the actual bolts right here. You're not looking at the bolt. This is a dust cover. And whenever you fire the firearm and the bolt cycles, that dust cover moves out of the way with the bolt so that your round can eject. Okay. Now another big change you'll see, or just kind of looking at a glance from the outside, is going to be the where the handguard meets the actual upper receiver. So on your Gen 2, the you have this like middle piece here, which is your, that mounts into your trunnion. Then you have these handguard bolts that are sticking out here that secure it to it. All right. On your Gen 3, you don't have any of that. Everything's nice and smooth, nice and clean. You have steel reinforced QD sockets there instead of some screws. All right. And to get the handguard off is actually exactly the same. You have a bolt on the bottom because that system works well. And that is a 530 second screw. You just pull that bad boy out and your handguard will come right off. All right. So I'm actually going to pull these handguards off um, so I can show you the differences. But before we do that, another difference is if you pick it up and handle it, Gen 2, you pull your charging handle back, you'll notice that all that stuff shoots out, right? That's not what we want. So, a lot less finicky here. If you pull the charging handle back on this one, nothing's gonna come flying out. Everything's locked into place. To get it out, you just lift up this clip here and it locks the, the bolt carrier and recoil assembly into place. So nothing's gonna come flying out when you don't want it to. All right. Now, as I promised, we'll uh, take that handguard off. And we'll just remove the screw on the bottom. I'm gonna take it all the way out. You don't have to take it all the way out. You can leave it in a few threads. It'll still come out just fine. Pull that out. And those screws are exactly the same. Gen 3 handguard. And Gen 2 handguard. And no, they will not swap. You can't you can't swap them out. Uh, the Gen 3 is specific for Gen 3 and the, the 2 uh, if it's previous generations. All right, so the piston design itself is very similar uh, it's still that multiple piece piston system. You have the rear section with the spring, you have a mid section, and then you have the front of the piston, all right? Now the difference for disassembly is that 
On the Gen 2s, you have this little clip here that you have to pull off and it comes right off. That's kind of easy to lose, obviously, right? Because it's just this little spring clip that holds the front of the piston on. Now on the Gen 3, the actual adjustment tab where you adjust the positions of the piston has a ring on it. You pull this ring and lift up. This machined block here fits into the keyway on the front and that's how you disassemble the piston on the Gen 3. So a uh, much better method there as far as components go. This one you have to forcibly take it off, right? You have to want it to come off. Uh, this one here is just the older way of doing things, right? So a big upgrade there. All right, so with that being said, whenever we start talking about the actual piston, you know, some people will say, hey, can you take the piston from one gun and put it on the other? Um, no, because of how the adjustment goes. This one on the Gen 3 is a three position system. Uh, and the Gen 2 here, this one is a two setting, suppressed, unsuppressed. The way those pistons fit together are a little bit different here. And they, they are built differently, so you can't swap around the gas blocks and things like that. The, the Gen 3 is kind of like a, almost like a reimagining from the ground up, built by your input on the Gen 2. So like you, you, you guys basically designed the Gen 3, okay? And we had to do a few things different, which is why the parts are not going to be all interchangeable. So even though parts aren't interchangeable, obviously, you know, we'll take care of you if you need an extra part on your Gen 3. That's no big deal. Okay, so let's get these things back together here. And those are your, your main primary differences, honestly. So uh, much better setup there. You notice you still have your aluminum receiver with a steel trunnion built in. Uh, there's only two screws holding it in on the Gen 3, whereas you had four on the Gen 2. Uh, but these are done in a different, a little bit different method here, so it's just more secure. All right. And I'll just tighten these back up here. All right, and there you have it. And if you need to pull this front trunnion out for any reason, like if you're a Cerakote shop or whatever, um, just put a little bit of heat on there. Those screws are Loctited in, they'll come right out. All right, so those are the main differences between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3. Um, oh, also, I missed one here. Notice that on the left-hand side, there is a full-length steel cam path. So that cam pin is running steel all the way back, right? On your Gen 2s, and some Gen, Gen 2s actually do have this full length steel cam path. We started putting that in a little bit later, um, but this is one of the earlier models, and most of them did not have that. Uh, so the issue there was that if you were over gassing the heck out of this thing, like if you were running um, unsuppressed setting with a suppressor, uh, this thing was getting way too much gas, right? Uh, especially those higher back pressure suppressors and the cam pin would actually dig into the receiver. So having that full-length steel cam path, uh, that's no longer an issue. All right, so Gen 2 versus Gen 3, there it is. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, again, make sure you watch the other videos on the Gen 3 as well. Uh, but if you need help with anything for any reason ever, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.